Cool. Hey, everybody. Today is Thursday, July 11, and we're back. It's been a couple months. We're back to chat about Proto School. So we have a lot of updates that I want to kind of run through, including probably the most important of them being uh, the Q3 OKRs that we've laid out to kind of what we want to prioritize coming up, but also lots of highlights um, to show you from stuff that has happened recently. Um, let me just quickly paste the link to our notes into the chat here. Um, chat. It's not in there. And then I will. So I'm actually going to change the order on some of these things in case we don't get to it all. And So I'm going to start really quickly sharing this. Um, I shared a version of this in GitHub in the organizers repo. But um, uh, just a couple of things that have happened recently, which may have happened since we had our meetings on pause. So one of them is that we got the mutable file system tutorial release. This is um, essentially our kind of our easiest introductory content about IPFS right now. Um, and we, this also includes showing off our new landing pages that Diogo got us set up with, which are awesome because now you can send someone a link to a specific tutorial and have them land right in the table of contents. Um, and then we were able to show off this MFS tutorial at IPFS camp. And there's some more content that's related from IPFS camp that we'll try to feed back into this tutorial as we go. Um, and here, uh-oh. Uh so a few other UX things that have happened over the past few months. Um, there's now a file type that's used in that MFS tutorial where you can build lessons that require file upload. Um, and then there's also an optional thing here where a user can view the solution to code. If they want to then cheat, they would have to go through the work of copying and pasting, but this is nice. We actually changed this partway through based on user feedback. So now you can cheat, but it's harder and you're not gonna have the, your own work overwritten accidentally. Um, and then Diego set us up with some markdown formatting. Um, and logging of results. So it's now possible when you build a tutorial to say, oh, you know what, the user would really benefit from seeing like what the output is of this command, for example. So you can log certain things to help people diagnose mistakes, and you can also use markdown formatting in success and failure messages. Um, we streamlined all the, Diego did a lot of work to kind of streamline the project structure in a way that makes more sense, makes it easier for people to create new tutorials. And then we've updated as we go and as we add new features, we're updating the instructions for building tutorials. And then Ollie built end to end testing to ensure that when you build a lesson and provide solutions, which is mandatory as an author to provide solutions, this robot will go through and make sure that the solutions actually pass our validation test, which doesn't mean everything is perfect, but it's a good thing to check on. Um, one other thing that we did uh, a little while back is to set up um, meta tags so that if you share on social a Proto School link, it will at least have a little screenshot in there and create a social card for itself. It still can't distinguish between um, pages in our single page app to do that, but um, it's helpful to have something visual when we share. And then we also are up to, at least when I took the screenshot, I think still 21 chapters on four continents. And we had a few people at IPFS camp that were interested in, um, in joining. So we'll see if we get some more leads from that. I need to, yes, gallery view. So that's a little look at some of the stuff that has happened further back. And I want to share uh, one of the things that should, ooh, 
that is the wrong window. Um, so one of the things we're excited about that's in a PR right now that's almost ready to merge is now we have landing pages, but we also now have, well, as soon as we merge PR, we will have these resources pages. So every tutorial that exists will have a resources lesson at the end of it. Um, and normally when you go to a lesson on a specific topic, the lesson itself has this link to share questions and feedback, which opens a GitHub issue and is then a really great resource for us, particularly while people are live at events giving us feedback. Um, but now when you go through, when you pass the last lesson here, you'll go to, there is really not much lesson in this. Um, I have to send me that file. <laughs> well, pretend there's next button. Do you get to your um, resources page before you get to the more tutorials button? And notice that this is a different footer here, which is asking for feedback about the tutorial in general. And one thing we will probably do is move that request for feedback up into the body of this where it's a little more visible. But for right now, this is a nice kind of short term um, solution to this. So the kinds of resources you might see here would include other proto school tutorials that make sense to try next. They would include documentation, they would include other demos or videos or articles or whatever makes sense. So we will ask the authors to submit. Um, there's a, it's now in the JSON format when you build your tutorial, there's a place to submit that information and then it pulls in all of the formatting is created behind the scenes by us so that it will be consistent across tutorials. But and these are accessible. We had at one point considered making it like you can only see this once you pass all the lessons, but we want people to have the opportunity to just go and look for stuff in other formats and we're tagging what those formats are. So um, this should be live hopefully by the end of the week. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Um, stop sharing that. And next up on my whirlwind tour, does anybody have questions about anything I've talked about so far? before I carry on. Okay. Um, next up, roadmap. Am I still sharing this or did I stop? Share. Not my calendar. Okay. So Q3 OKRs, this is where we're at right now. Um, one of the things that happened at our IPFS team week, obviously, Proto School is not purely tied to IPFS, and there will be a lot more content, but we work really closely with the IPFS team. Um, so there's an initiative within the IPFS group right now to sort of break down into task forces and tackle some big problems. And we've sort of aligned Proto School with one of the big um, tasks that we that we want to tackle right now, which is improving our documentation and kind of educational resources for people. And we view Proto School as kind of one format through which that happens. So we will be kind of linking some of these uh, goals back to some epics over there. But for those of you who are interested in Proto School, you can find everything you need about Proto School right here. So I'm in the roadmap repo um, within the Proto School org. This is where you can find both kind of longer term roadmap, OKRs, uh, meeting notes, et cetera. So this, this is a draft of our Q3 OKRs, and we should, for the most part, have Diogo and I working mostly full-time on Proto School this quarter. Um, so we have the, the bulk of these in our buckets. Um, and these are the same objectives that you've seen in the past. So the first one is in our website, including an increasing range of tutorial content from across multiple projects. So the content itself improving and growing over time. So one of the top things on our list is to go back and look at what was created for IPFS camp. There were a lot of workshops. A lot of people spent a lot of time thinking about the best ways to explain things and creating graphics that were really helpful. So I'm going to go back through the content from camp and think about what would make a nice standalone tutorial in Proto School, what would have some nice images or explanations that we can add into existing tutorials. So by the end of the quarter, we will have at the very least a plan for where all, all of that fits in, if not some of that already put in. Um, and then there are two ideas here in terms of content that we generated last quarter and haven't executed on yet. So one is that our decentralized data structures tutorial, this is the text only one that we've kind of used as the starting point. 
we realize that it's really kind of treating two totally separate topics that are at different levels of technicality. One is the whole, like, what is decentralized web? Why does content addressing matter? So the web you're used to versus the centralized web. And this, uh, this the other half of it is very much like data formats, like the intricacies of inside of a CID and then Merkle DAG, which just kind of drops off. And it's not clear why we're telling you about Merkle DAG structure. And there is some good content from camp about that. So we're gonna pull this apart into two tutorials and kind of recommend them at different times in the workflow. Um, and then we also want to build a tutorial. The MFS one only covers the like IPFS dot files dot whatever that uses the mutable file system, this abstraction. But we need to also cover the things like add that are in the normal um, the normal part of the of the the files API or the the part without the dot files in it. Um, so we want to circle back. Um, Hugo did some work to enable blobs to be better supported in the browser. So that's going to be a lot easier to build now. So that's, those are the one, the new content that we're hoping to definitely get out this quarter, but we may find other stuff coming through um, quickly as well from camp. So that's on the content front. And then we have this whole bucket that's essentially like user experience, learner experience, um, and making improvements to the way that the site works so that we can support more stuff there and linking back and forth to documentation. So one of these relates to what I just showed you with that resources page. We wanna make sure that all of the existing proto school tutorials, as well as moving forward, everything that we add, links to existing documentation. So both within the content of a lesson, it will link to the docs for a certain API, but also from those resource pages at the end. So making it easier for people to find other learning materials is gonna be really important. Um, and it also gives us a better chance to take care of the folks who are like, but the thing I made that's great to teach people stuff doesn't fit in ProtoSchool. Well, you're right, but we can link to it from a resources page. So command line things at the moment, for example. Um, and vice versa, we want to go back to the documentation. So let's say in the files API documentation, make sure that there's a link to the ProtoSchool MFS tutorial so that people are finding their ways between different kinds of documentation. Um, we want to add support for multiple choice exercises, which is going to help authors be able to build a broader range of content. That would be a nice choice for something that you don't necessarily want people to have to code. It could be a more of an entry level, high level conversation, but keeping people engaged. Um, so that is in progress, so maybe halfway done. Um, we also want to make it possible to build libp2p tutorials and support validation. So I believe the key piece here is that we need to create a libp2p instance in the background so that you can test things against it or let people change their settings or whatever. So uh, Diogo is gonna talk to Jacob and see what we can do to make that possible within the system. So we can add, there was some um, libp2p content at camp as well. Um, and that's part of a broader effort to extend our content beyond IPFS in general. So getting ourselves to a place where we can support more, more detailed stuff. Um, we did a great job last quarter of making our instructions more clear for how to build tutorials. There's very much like, you need this file and you need to change this part of it. Um, and when you change it here, it will come out here in the, in the ultimate view. But what we're missing is how you break down information into smaller chunks and teach people effectively what are kind of the limitations of the platform, like the fact that you can't do command line stuff right now. So a little more information around that added to the documentation for building tutorials. And then we also wanna just take a review. We, we don't know which way we're going with this yet, but we wanna sit down, explore other um, online coding education platforms just to see if there is a solution out there that is full featured enough and flexible enough to meet our needs so that we're kind of making a decision between incorporating an existing solution and uh, moving our content over while we don't have a ton of content to move over or continuing to build our own feature set and move forward with what we have. And we don't know which way that will go, but we want to look at that before we get too deep into building everything into our, our own piece there. And there all are, are a couple of issues already um, where people have suggested certain alternatives. So looking at those plus other things we find. Um, so that's the sort of like learner experience category. Um, and then enabling chapter leaders to, fo to foster their local communities around the globe. We're hoping to add more chapters, hopefully more than this, but conservative goal here. And then set some clearer expectations for 
um, individual leadership, what constitutes like the right motivations for leading a chapter, what the intended event model is, like you're using the proto school content at your events. Um, just adding a little more guidance around that to make things more clear and make those events that come out of proto school more consistent based on a shared understanding. Um, and then this one is more sort of like structurally setting the project up for success. So two of the things, this, this first one is, has a PR that's pretty much ready to go. So we're going to, instead of using Google Analytics, use Countly, where we end up, like we are owning the data, not Google owning the data that we collect. Um, and the way that we've set this up, it interacts with views router. So it can now distinguish. We have not to date been able to distinguish how many people were visiting tutorial A versus tutorial B. And now we can, and we can see the specific lessons that they're visiting, et cetera. Um, so that one's almost ready to go. And then the next step in that will be seeing how frequently people are choosing to reset the code or view the solution on each lesson. And that's going to give us a better sense of what's too hard. Uh, what's working well, where people are falling off in the trail. Um, so that's the other piece. And those are really top priority because we need to get some measurement methods in place so that we can have a way to help judge our success as we move into the future. Um, and then the rest of these are are a bit more about like this, the people that we need to succeed, um, making sure that we have the folks we need, what's the structure of the people that we need moving forward and where we can get more support there. Um, taking, a, taking a look as we have continued to at like the ways cultural differences affect what people are doing in their local chapters and how we can better support people there. And then there's an ongoing question as um, SPL and IPFS look at um, having a communications team in place, whether it makes sense for under a proto school brand for there to be a blog or publication that's really developer focused. We don't know yet whether that will happen, but if it's going to, we need to think about the, the capacity resources that we would need to accommodate that. So that's a look at what we're looking at for Q3 OKRs, and these are all kind of prioritized, what is most important to knock out of the park as soon as possible. Um, does anybody have questions on those or concerns or suggestions? Uh, no, I don't think so. Just for example, for the lead peer to peer validation, mm -hmm. I think we'll have to do some kind of refactor to the existing code. So yeah. that's going to be a huge bunch of work. It's summarizing yeah. that, 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 that's OKR, okay, but it will take a lot of time, I think. Yeah. So that's, some, that's one of those things that's like the, the piece that underlies it that isn't written is like, explore whether this is a thing that is possible and a good idea to do and then do it if it's a good idea to do so if you look at it and it's insane and there's another way we can teach the p2p without adding a particular piece like we can look at those options um, but hopefully in collaboration with jacob he's given some thought to it as he looked at it but we'll see and the the underpinnings of it are where i need the most help so we can also talk to folks like michael who built the system originally if we need anything any other guidance there um, yeah. Any thoughts, Dan, before we move on? It's looking good, no. Cool. Um, yeah, so we'll be keeping that up to date. We also, uh, I don't think I've actually submitted it yet, but very shortly we will have a uh, recap on our, how we did in Q2. Maybe I can share that next week once we push it live. We knocked a lot of stuff out in Q2. Um, and a lot of the stuff I showed you in that, in that presentation earlier is stuff that wasn't explicitly in our OKRs, but as we were like, oh yeah, we need this thing too to make this useful. So a lot of that will happen along the way. Um, all right, what else did I have on my list today? Um, IPFS camp. Does anybody want to share what happened at IPFS camp? Dan, you want to talk about anything? Sure. I thought it was really good. I know uh, I really enjoyed it and was really honored to be able to come out and meet so many of my uh, my little heroes. It's it a good time. Uh, and one thing that I think came out of it that I am going to follow up here on relatively soon is a lot of people are interested in starting chapters and starting IPFS groups in general. 
Um, so opening up the conversation, I think, especially on GitHub to say, I'd love to support you and just uh, talk with you about some best practices. Uh, yeah. That's something we potentially could consider parsing out text-wise into a kind of meta tutorial on ProtoSchool. Like if you like this content and would like to share it, here's some instructions about how you could potentially go about that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just, it's a thought. Uh, so as soon as I'm coming up uh, over some other things I'm doing here, uh, that's something I'd love to contribute. Yeah, and there's, I think there are a few resources that are out there that people aren't using that we can keep, like, get more in the public eye. So, for example, there is, for anyone who hasn't seen it, when you go in the organizing repo, there's a resources MD file that includes stuff like how you get your stickers sent to you that you can share with your attendees or um, where to find good examples of codes of conduct. For example, if you wanted to make the a Chinese version of your English code of conduct, whatever stuff to consider. Um, but there are also discussions in GitHub. So we're using issues. There are some issues flagged as discussion, including things like, tell us how your first event went, like what was involved in planning it? How did it go? What could you have done better as a place for people to learn from each other? And there are some chapters who have been great about sharing and some who haven't, including some that I know had amazing first events that have not yet had the time to jot those notes down for us. So I think the more we can build that discussion. Um, we talked about this a bit at camp, but I want to make sure that that stuff gets documented in places where it's referenceable later. Um, so, but I'm very open to more suggestions on how we can kind of be there for each other. And I really appreciated that you and Kevin and um, Stefan all stepped up and took the lead on that uh, elective course at camp on doing some community leadership in the IPFS community, partly IPFS, partly proto school um and and it's great to have some of our chapter leaders who are really open to helping other people figure out how to get started and what what kinds of issues they need to navigate as they work with local communities that's super helpful um, totally yeah let's see what else yeah camp was great we did the mfs tutorial was used people kind of Saw it at the at the tail end of one of at Alan's uh, Alan and Michael's um, workshop on working with I don't even know if I know the name of their thing but they talked about Merkle Dag stuff they talked about files there was some interesting stuff that I learned about the distinction between you know how how safe MFS stuff is from garbage collection or whatever there were some interesting caveats there. Um, so people got at least a little bit of exposure to proto school there, even if they weren't at that community um, elective. And um, we definitely had a lot of folks, both the three of you who led that session, but also a few other folks who are chapter leaders who are there. Um, and then we also have, I'll make a plug in case anyone ever watches these videos. We do have offline camp coming up. There's a D-Web camp coming up in... Uh, late July in San Francisco, but I'm organizing offline camp, which is in Oregon, the first weekend in August. Um, and that's an opportunity not specifically about DWeb, but for anyone who's interested in making stuff actually work offline or in crappy network conditions. And some people approach it from a DWeb perspective, some don't, but it's a, it's a really nice like unconference retreat getaway um, in the woods with llamas. So if anyone would like more information on that, ping me or visit offlinefirst.org slash camp. Um, I'll put it in the notes. Uh, yeah, what else do people want to talk about? Did I miss, Diogo, have I, we haven't met since maybe mid-May. Did my little recap thing cover most of the things you remember doing on Proto School since then, or did I miss something fun we've been working on? Mm, from what I remember, that is not much, <laughs> but I think it covered everything, basically. Okay. Yeah. See, I think we've done things. If you actually sit back and try to make a presentation about it, you look really successful. We're doing things. We're cranking stuff yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think we have two, like, our big things coming up next are that resources page that I gave you the sync preview of and getting those Countly analytics in place so we'll be able to see what tutorials people are hitting. And I'm also curious to go back into our Google Analytics and see how much of an extra traffic we got during IPFS camp or um, 
Jen just released an end of quarter newsletter, the IPFS newsletter that had the MFS tutorial in it. So stuff like that. I'm curious to see how much the traffic is spiking there. Oh, we had a fun moment on Twitter. Someone enjoyed my explanation of um, how you might accidentally find a chihuahua sitting at beagle.jpg or a kitten or something. So people are enjoying our beginner friendly examples with pet humor. It's nice. Um, yeah, four minutes to go. What would people like to chat about in proto school world? I have just one question. One question yeah. uh, in camp, did you, did people took the MFS lesson, the tutorial? So they started it, it was like you know, there was an hour and a half to do the thing. And maybe in some groups, maybe five minutes from the end, they started and some groups, two minutes from the end, they started. So I don't know, I suspect no one got through the whole tutorial during the course of their lesson, but they at least saw the beginnings of it and got started. Okay, um, yeah, I was going to, to ask if someone gave some feedback about it. Um, I think I heard some feedback that was, I, I heard a few people, like, oh yeah, proto school, that's cool. I didn't hear a lot of specific feedback about the MFS tutorial. So hopefully people will get back into exploring it, maybe see the link in the newsletter and get deeper into it there. But yeah. Um, right. We did yeah, have, no, I've been, go ahead. Well, as I said, I've been uh, diving through it and putting in a couple of uh, mm. notes throughout. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, Thank so you. I, I, yeah, so I'll, I'll continue to do that. And uh, take any any critical feedback is is perfectly just love and optional <laughs> suggestions. Thank um, you. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. and really um, yeah, we have Kelsey in Seattle has been great about giving feedback like that too. I had sent her the link before we <laughs> before we went live to the public, and we have some. We have there's a lot of like lesson feedback that's sitting in our queue. So there are things that aren't in our OKRs that we will certainly be picking up as we go along. And one of them is responding to the lesson feedback that we get. Um, a lot of it is like very actionable immediately. Some of it is like leads us to like, oh yeah, we do need to split that tutorial into two. You're right, it makes no sense, but it makes no sense because we structured it wrong or whatever else. And some of it is just quick like language fixes that really help. So um, yeah, that's great stuff to collect. And we might want to think about like figuring out a way to connect the issues to each other better to consolidate feedback about certain lessons in the right place, whatever, but um, all stuff to work on as we go. So uh, we should be, not, I will knock on all the fake IKEA wood that I have here. We should be good to keep going with these meetings um, weekly moving forward for the foreseeable future. Um, the Just a reminder that there's the IPFS weekly call on Wednesdays at whatever time it is, one Mondays at whatever time it is, one minute from right now for you where you live, um, which is like a half hour and usually involves someone from the broader community showing like how they're using IPFS in a project. Once a month it involves like a few lightning talks and that's a pretty cool place to um, catch some interesting demos and stuff that's going on in the community. Where we because of this shift to task forces in IPFS, we've rescheduled a lot of meetings, but the IPFS community calendar is still the right place to go to figure out when stuff is happening um, in IPFS world, obviously, and then the proto school call we have here. If anybody hasn't found it, there's a GitHub issue that is about this meeting, so I, there are some updates and notifications. You can subscribe there if you want to make sure you notice when things change, but um, yeah, that's all I have for you today. I will see you all next week. Ooh. And thanks, thanks again for the help at Camp Dan. You did a great job with that session. Oh, thank you. It was fun. Yeah. All right. All See right. You talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.